voicemail strategies, how to get more prospects to call you back today. In this session, we're going to discuss why voicemails fail and how to fix them, plus how to use the voicemail email combination to set more appointments. If you're listening to this session, it's because you're not satisfied with the number of callbacks your current voicemail strategy is generating. Maybe you're not even sure if you should leave a voicemail anymore because no one ever calls you back. If you're leaving voicemails and prospects are not calling you back, voicemail isn't the problem. The message you're leaving on their voicemail is the problem. And the good news is you can fix it and fix it fast. Voicemail is a very powerful tool because when appropriately used, it captures your prospect's undivided attention. When you learn what to say on voicemail to pique your prospect's interest, voicemails can become an asset, especially when a lot of salespeople have decided to give up on leaving voicemail messages. This further creates an opportunity for you to get your prospect's attention if you know how to leave the right message. So to start getting more callbacks, you have to figure out why voicemails fail. You need to identify what's causing the problem if you're going to come up with the right solution. Here are four reasons why voicemails fail. The salesperson isn't prepared prior to picking up the phone. They just wing it. The salesperson has no understanding of what the actual objective of leaving a voicemail is. You would think it's obvious, but you're going to see here in a second it's not. The salesperson has not created a compelling reason for the callback. And finally, the salesperson has not rehearsed. Let me ask you this. If you're a sales rep, when is the last time you role played your voicemail message with a coworker? If you're a sales manager, when's the last time you've done that for your team, whether individually, one on one, or in a group? Look, nobody wants their feelings hurt. I get that. But if you're going to get better, iron sharpens iron. You're going to have to start role playing your sales plays if you want to get better at them. And you want to make sure you're practicing and role playing the right sales strategies to have success. So let's get started and discuss how to get more callbacks. If you're going to get more callbacks, you have to understand that there are two types of voicemails. There's a first time voicemail and a follow up voicemail. Each type of voicemail has its own objective. When you are making a first time outbound call, your voicemail objective is to what? Your objective for leaving a first time voicemail is to get a call back and advance the sales call. Why am I emphasizing and advance the sales call? Here's why. If you've ever had a salesperson use what later turned out to be a deceptive voicemail message to get you to call them back, how was your mood towards that salesperson? Not good, right? Tricking prospects into calling you back by leaving mysterious or misleading voicemails may get some of your prospects to call you back, but they won't be doing business with you. So to increase callbacks that lead to more sales opportunities, we need to leave better messages that provide value to the prospect. What I am teaching you here is the formula to craft your own Winning voicemail message. Number one, your intro. You have to capture their attention. Two, value. Have a what's in it for them value proposition that hits a hot button or a pain point. Three, call to action. Invite them to receive or learn about the benefit value that you offer. Here's an example. Hi, Mr. Prospect. This is your name with your company name. The reason for my call we recently helped competitor one, two, and three avoid or gain or solve, take your pick, and now mention a problem or benefit. If I am cold calling a prospect that is in an industry that I've helped in the past, I want to mention the other companies I've helped to my prospect for this simple reason. All C-level execs want to know what their competitors are using to gain an advantage. Now, if you're not allowed to mention your client's names, you replace the client's names with industry. Here's an example. Intro example number two. Hi, prospect's name. This is your name with your company name. The reason for my call is we help manufacturing companies avoid, and now you mention a pain point. Or the reason for my call is we help manufacturing companies overcome or solve, 
And now again, mention a pain point. Some salespeople might be tempted to change the phrase to, the reason for my call is we help companies in your industry, but I prefer not to do that because when a prospect hears your industry or we work with clients like you, the prospect might think you say that to everyone and not believe you. Using the phrase, we worked with clients like you, might create distrust, which is the exact opposite of what you want to accomplish. The goal of your voicemail intro is to pique their interest just enough to where they want to hear what it is that you've done for others like them. Next is value. You want to provide a what's in it for them message. You want to mention the desired result that they would want to achieve. Example, Hi, Prospect's name. This is Michael Padone with salesbuzz.com. The reason for my call, we recently helped competitor one, two, and three generate 25% more sales appointments per month by eliminating call reluctance. Next, you want to finish off with a strong CTA, call to action. The call to action has to be safe for the prospect. If they feel you're going to try and sell them something, they are not going to call you back. So make them feel comfortable. Example, the reason for my call, we recently helped competitor A generate 25% more sales appointments per month by eliminating call reluctance. There's a possibility we might be able to produce similar results for you too. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm about to send you an email and if you like what you read and you decide you want to know more, you can reply to the email or you can give me a call back at, and now you leave your name and number twice. See how easy that is? Now, when you are at the end of your voicemail, leave your name and number twice. You want to leave your number twice at the end because no one likes it when they have to re-listen to voicemail again to hear the number to call you back. And remember, if you cannot write your number down as you're saying it, neither can your prospects. So make sure you practice your speed of delivery. Now, let's talk about how to use email to get your voicemail heard and to set more appointments. As you noticed in my voicemail example, I mentioned I was about to send them an email. This is a powerful two-step combo to help increase your chances of getting your prospect's attention and setting an appointment or getting a call back. Here's how it works. One, you create an email voicemail template. The template email subject line should be voicemail. In the body of the email, it would simply say, hi, prospect's name. I just left you a voicemail regarding how we help companies that sell by phone eliminate call reluctance. Our clients have seen a 25% increase in appointments within the first 30 days. Would love to schedule a quick call and share with you how we did it. And now in the email, you have a link for them to schedule a call with you. You do not add any more to the email, no links to what you offer or PDFs explaining your products or services. The goal is to get them to call you back or to schedule a call with you. That is the objective. And to do that, we need to give information that will pique their curiosity to want to know more and then have a safe call to action that makes it easy for them to reach out to you. 